you know, everyone just watched The Flash and, you know, there's like, my initial reaction, I guess, but it's like, I like the movie, I would say that. So there's stuff I liked about it, there's stuff I didn't, it's just a whole lot of missed opportunities, in a way, because it's like, it's, it's, you know, it's, what's up with these comic book movies and cramming in five or more, you know, like two, three different storylines into one, right, because this was, like, you know, it's like, I don't, I, I doubt anyone cares about spoilers, I clearly don't, but it's, right now it's just that it was clearly an origin story, like, you know, with, I did like the fact that Andy Muschietti and Christina Hudson and the rest of the team used this movie to tell an origin story using Barry 2. So we got to see all that, you know, that was nice. A plus, they did the whole where was Flash during Ma the events of Man of Steel. So seeing all that was pretty cool. And, you know, so he added, you know, you built up the universe. But I would have been, it would have been nicer to see that in a singular movie, maybe, where it's not a time travel paradox movie, like, you know, Flashpoint paradox movie. Like, you know, it would have been nicer to see what they can do with just a solo Flash adventure. Like, I'm not going to say I didn't like the movie, but, I, like, I liked it. Is it a movie I'm, I want to see again straight away? Probably not. Maybe I'll wait, let it settle a bit and see it again. It's like, in, it, this is literally the reaction I had with Batman vs Superman. Like, I, maybe I liked it, maybe I didn't like it. It was a weird movie. And I'll probably have to wait and see it again. But, but it's like, it's, it's just so weird, you know. So everything, I guess everything was so working against this movie because everyone was looking looking at this movie as a reboot, as a way to reboot the entire universe, which is so weird. Like, why not just reboot the universe without spending over $200 million or whatever, however much to reboot the universe? Just redo it all over again, easily. But it's like, like I would say the visuals were pretty good, although, you know, you could tell some of the CGI was clearly off and they needed more time. Even though it's weird, like, you know, they had all this time and still, like, they still didn't give the CGI artists more time to, like, polish up some of the scenes and stuff. But it's like, overall, the CGI work, the visuals work, you know, whenever he was in the speed force, when he first starts running the way, everything just speeds up, like, if you're in a moving vehicle and just look to the side outside the mirror, everything's just speeding lines, it was like, that was great, you know, it's like a comic book stuff, and I like that, the idea of the speed ball effect, where he's seeing and, you know, reversing time, that's amazing, that's pretty cool, but it's like, it is a lot of visual information as well, and I guess, like I said, the movie clearly needed to be two or three different movies, like, I get it, you know, they wanted to reboot the universe, but aside from all that, if I just solely focus on the movies, like, I, like, I'm glad they tried to keep the focus on Barry as much as possible, you know, to focus on him and his mom. That's the thing I liked, where by having two Barrys, they did that, you know, like, both Barrys. One, you could see how the main Barry could have turned out if his mother didn't die, right? So, so he's a more happier guy, he's more chill chilled, but also you get to see the whole... They do the whole, oh, I am an annoying person, because now I'm annoyed by my younger self, like, it's sort of like... A reflection of us, you know, right? Would we get along or be annoyed by if we met our younger selves? But, you know, I would have liked to have seen that maybe in a solely Flash movie, like what if Barry was travelling back in time to save his mum, but, you know, there wasn't all this multiverse stuff and it was just worth exploring. It would have been a unique way to tell the story, which it was, like, you know, like I said, it's, like, it's nice to get the origin through old and young Barry, but you know, maybe let's skip all this multiverse stuff. It's great having Michael Keaton back, you know, meeting Supergirl with Sasha Kaye, I want to say, right? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right, but it's great, you know, we got her Supergirl and to see what trajectory her life went through. Like, you know, everything Jonathan Kent said in Man of Steel, he was right. So it, it, those were pretty cool. And like I said, having Michael Keaton back is pretty cool as well. But it's just like, if we were to take all that away, and just solely focus on the, the f two Barrys, like, I mean, like, properly, like, let's see the future version, like, you know, the little glimpses of like, present-day Barry and alternate universe Barry, so being, like, you know, training alternate universe Barry, it was like, that's cool, that's amazing, let's get more of that, and let's see 
his life like with his parents and then, then maybe they confront the parents and stuff but it's like like I said it's like the stuff I like but overall it's just it's such a weird movie for me like especially when you get to the end and you're seeing all these little CGI puppets and stuff and I'm like okay that's amazing you know it's like it's weird honestly it was a bit off putting like when I first saw it which was kind of also annoying because everyone's just sharing on the timeline you know if you go online never they like, posting screenshots and I'm like it feels spiteful, but I'm also like, maybe one of us deserves it, maybe they don't deserve it, I don't know, who cares. But honestly, I think if I f saw those cameos without being spoiled, I probably would have felt the same. Because it's like, it's kind of weird, especially because, you know, you've had, you had Brandon Ruth. He's clearly the Christopher Reeve continuation, so why not use him? But they don't. Or maybe bring in Tom Welling, like, he's literally the last Superman actor who Christopher Reeve basically passed the torch on to and you're not gonna include him like so it, it's it was kind of weird like I said, said there's stuff I like but there's this movie like the first half of the movie I wasn't really fond of like you know seeing Batman and Flash team up you're like okay that's cool but it's not really it's kind of annoying me but because like the way they're trying to go about it with the whole metabolism aspect and then you know it's like maybe it would have been nicer because if it didn't feel like bit of the MCU humour was creeping in because the minute he time travels backwards that's when I feel like the movie kind of got serious and it's trying to tell you the story which it was and like I said they did a pretty good job on trying to tell the story but it's just you know it's a lot for the first Flash movie and you know it's my personal bias I'm not gonna lie where I, I solely wanted a Flash vs the Rogue movie clearly and that's not what we were getting that's not what we got and I would appreciate it if we got that instead of a multiverse movie because it's kind of weird to start your first movie off with the multiverse but then again it kind of works with the Flash because he is, I think technically isn't he the first comic book character to meet a, go travel through the multiverse and meet him and Jay Garrick first met I think that's like the first initial multiverse connections so I guess he does work but you know so maybe keep a small scale for the first movie and then essentially establish it like make it bigger like slowly but you know I guess they had that one chance and they took it and up which I would say, like you know give them props for like Andy Muschietti and his team clearly did amazing with you know with the visuals for and the way Batman moved like both Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton they were, their Batman were amazing like you're like it's the same thing people said back in 2016 where Zack Snyder would make a perfect Batman movie Andy Muschietti would make a perfect Batman movie. I feel like that's, those are the stuff we're going to see. I think those are the stuff people have already said from the trailers and stuff. Where Andy Muschietti would make a pretty good Batman movie from the clips we saw in the trailers. And after seeing the movie, that is 100% correct. And I feel like he is going to get the Brave and the Bold movie to do that. You know, it's, it's like, it's, it is kind of nice where it feels like we're starting fresh right now for DC. It's like, okay, at the very least, this feels like we can finally move on. Especially with James Gunn announcing the reboot. You're like, okay, that's good. It's something that feels like it's going something. We're not in this weird confusion era anymore, right? Since we've been since I think what, 2017 with DC, like is it a reboot? Is it a not reboot? Is it a soft reboot? Not soft reboot. Like what's going on? Who's staying? Who's leaving? At least it's like start fresh. But only thing I hope is James Gunn isn't, you know, doing this weird thing where, where I'm gonna keep some of the characters but not some of the characters. No, just like completely reboot it. If you have to restart all over again, just restart it all over again. There's no point in keeping more. Like, maybe if you want to keep, want to do the Peacemaker, just keep them on a separate universe, don't melt, merge them into the new DCEU. There's no reason to, like, merge Peacemaker onto that universe, like, let's just keep it all separate. Mm, yeah, but anyway, I'm moving on from that, it's, uh, moving back to the movie. Like, it's great that they el revisited the elements of Man of Steel, like, basically the entire second and third half is literally in the Man of Steel timeline, right? So that's amazing, in 2013. But it's like, you know, it's like, I don't know, how would I, how would, it's, it is a weird movie for me, like, was my mind blown from everything I'm seeing and, and, you know, the, the stuff that's happening in the storyline, yes, I, I will admit, like, like I said, I've, I liked this movie and, you know, I probably might see it again, but obviously I'll have to see it later on, it's not something I want to see straight away, like, let me set, set to learn it for a while. It was also cluttered with a multiverse story that should have waited, and clearly it was mishandled by producers. And a lot of people said this has to happen, this has to have happened, 
and maybe that wasn't the right choice for the movie to make but when you skip all that it's like and just focus on the acting and the story it is pretty good in the sense where like Ezra Miller like they're not, I'm going to like 80% of the time I did find him annoying but it's, it fed into the story like how uh, present day Barry is seeing his younger self right it's like I'm glad they used that in the story so you can sort of see the growth of present day Barry where he is mit- like, if they were possibly to continue he is maturing and has matured since we last saw him and that's amazing that's cool like but you know it's like if the moon I don't know it's like, like the movie is a love letter to DC but I wish they would have included more of DC like maybe bring in Tom Welling bring in Brandon Ruth right bring in Grant Gustin and John Wesley Shipp like they are the Flash they're Barry Allen they even the CW series multiverse crossovers right set up that Ezra and Barry uh, sorry Ezra's Barry and Grant's Barry will possibly meet again and they've said it that's clearly why they put that in the series during that crossover episode and then you know they don't have it they don't do anything with it in the movie it feels like a misstep like you missed up you could they could have they could have done more like it would have been nice to just end the movie with grant and ezra racing honestly i would have loved that though it would have been pretty cool or just to bring them in like you know john wesley ship is the first barry allen in live action if i'm not wrong and he's clearly had a prominent role in the Flash TV series and Stargirl and Legends, I think as well, like major of the DC TV series. So to not have him in the first big Flash movie, I felt like it, that's a bit of like you're not. It's like what's going on? There's clearly a miscommunication or something is not lining up here. But I like the movie. Yes, like I liked Sasha Kaelis Kara from the very little we got of her. Like she was. She did good, she did alright, and it would have been nice to see her interact with Henry, Henry's Clark, right? They're clearly playing cousins. Like, the emotional journey we went through with, you know, Barry, like, connecting with his mom, showing the past of how he had his relationship, you know, how his, his mom's relationship was, and how he missed out on all everything, it worked, but, you know, so I just wish we got to spend more time there. Like, even with the very little scenes and glimpses we've seen through the photo montage as Barry's using the speed force, or, like, like I said, you know, where he's talking to his mom and he's doing the whole I love you, I love you more, I love you first and stuff. Like, it all works. Like, the emotions are there. And even in the comic and the cartoon, like, the emotions was there. But it's like, it's like you know, it felt like they just they needed more time to explore that aspect. Like, you know, when Barry has to sacrifice his mom's life and let time happen the way it has to happen. Like, he has to take away the can of soup and it's like, it's a huge thing, right? And clearly, Barry did change the timeline with the whole camera angle by moving the suit up. And I guess, like the movie said, it's small changes you can make, but you can't make big changes. But it's like, you clearly changed the timeline in some significant way that wasn't supposed to be changed. And I did like the fact that the movie didn't have the reverse flash. Like, there was no hint towards it, although would I have loved it? If they did, yes, but maybe keeping him out of the movie was a good, a very excellent choice. And it's a weird ending to the DC Universe because we've got Aquaman coming up next. Is that an epilogue? I don't know. A lot of missed opportunities, I would say. It's like, this movie is a very big product of all the things that went wrong with DC. And... I don't know, maybe if I see it again, I probably won't like it. Maybe, maybe I love it even more, because I've seen it once, I know what's going to happen. And But for my first reactions, I like the movie. I just wish they did some stuff differently. Anyway, like, you know, I did this drawing before I saw the movie. And this is stuff, something I, obviously something I hoped, and I, I had a feeling that we probably wouldn't get it, especially from reading all the interviews, but I still thought I should do the drawing. It's like, come on, it's the three live action berries. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna stop here. I feel like I'm continually repeating the same things over and over again and I think the video is getting a bit longer than it I intend to. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, comment below, like, share, subscribe, everything else, right? And let me know what you think of the flash. If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, um bye.